I was born in Grimsby in Lincolnshire, which is on the east coast of England. The only musical member of my family was my paternal grandmother. And I can remember one of my earliest memories is hearing her play the piano. And at the age I should think of about four, I decided I wanted to play it as well. And so she used to write numbers on the piano keys which I then, then translated into notes um, from a kind of a code which she used to write out. My father, when I was about five or six, took over a pub. The pub had a concert room where holiday makers would get up and sing their favourite songs, I suppose like an old-fashioned karaoke, really. And we had a pub pianist called George Marsden. And I had a year's, year's lesson with, with him um, and he told my father that I didn't really have any ability. <laughs> and he, he would address me as poker fingers, which isn't very flattering. And then my father, I don't know if he probably saw I had, he believed I had some sort of ability, I don't know. But he started to make me then go to these piano lessons. And I had, I should think, four years with George Marsden before I went away to a private school and realised I was streets ahead of anybody else in my year musically. Once I got to boarding school, as we call it there, I, I had a very good piano teacher called William Varco, who wasn't, he wasn't so hot on the technique, but he was a very spiritual man. And he used to play a lot of music to me. He would play the piano to me a lot. I don't know, I, somehow he drew out in me um, the emotive musician. It was when I went to university to read music in Durham, in the north of England, at the age of 18, that I began to learn real technique. And once I arrived at Durham, I switched to the organ because of the fan fantastic organ in the cathedral there. And I learnt organ with David Hill, who of course now is uh, a giant in the field of choral music. And when I left Durham, he continued to teach me when he was organist of Westminster Cathedral. And if I have a mentor, musical mentor in life, it's David Hill. Durham is a small city with not many professional concerts. And so students in, in a very good music department, I have to say, made their own music. And students elected their own conductors. And I, I was lucky enough to be conductor of the university at Chamber Choir and the University Symphony Orchestra. I stayed on for a year to do a master's degree, not in modern techniques or in a composition. In those days, that was something which didn't interest me one bit. I studied with the late Dr. Jerome Roche, the period 1550 to 1650, with special emphasis on early Venetian public opera and Renaissance polyphony, mainly based in Rome, Palestrina. Little did I know that studying those hundred years, which saw the birth of the major and minor key system. Little did I know that was the best thing I could have done as a composer living in the 21st century. Far more valuable than being taught a lot of modern techniques which have now gone by and by. Leaving Durham, my greatest wish was to become a conductor. And I was actually offered a place at the Royal Academy of Music to study conducting with organ but mainly for financial reasons, I decided, after a lot of thought, not to take that up, and I went into teaching music instead. Something I thought I'd only do for a few years, but I ended up teaching music for 16 years. First in a small public school in Berkshire. I was there for nine years, and then seven years at a wonderful school, one of England's most prestigious public schools, Charterhouse, which has a fantastic music department and is the school where Vaughan Williams was a pupil. Indeed, I got to know Ursula Vaughan Williams' wife quite well. And I've always felt a particular affinity with Vaughan Williams, partly because of the Charterhouse connection, but also because I was born in 1958, the year, year he died. And so I had these 16 years of teaching, which I never thought I'd have. And it was during those years that I realised I had a gift as a composer.